Hello, hello! Welcome back! Today I am continuing with what I suppose is a series, very small series, but it's a series nonetheless. Last week I posted a video about my experience with the 7 day ab challenge from Blogilates and today I'll be chatting about the 7 day arm challenge. And again, I'll be using a fancy voiceover, which really isn't that fancy at all, not even using a proper microphone, but you know, what can you do? We'll be getting into that in just a moment, but first, my sister kind of crashed my workout on day seven of this challenge, so as payback, she gets to be in this video. <laughs> so here's a clip of a little fun we had before I started the workout. Lynn is watching today. I haven't talked the entire time I've been filming these videos. I've literally just been there. Okay, and then get the start of the video started. Yes. So this should be fun. I get an audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> joyful, joyful. We adore thee. So, um, are these videos for your own personal, personal pleasure? Or are they for Well, yes, and do they are for my own personal person. <laughs> they are a progress tracker. Uh -huh. I want to put a side by side of both videos and be like, uh -huh. the first day I sucked real bad, and then the last day I was not as sucky. <laughs> <laughs> but it was still pretty bad. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I paused the video on this. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing oil riggers, which you will see in a second. But basically, she's got her nose to the floor because that's how you do oil riggers. Um, <laughs> that's very funny. So. so here we are again, a disembodied voice. <laughs> so here we are with the arm challenge. I am so tempted to put a word counter up in the corner to see how many times I say the word challenge in this video because it's gonna be a lot. Um, again, what you're seeing on screen are the seven moves in round three of three from day one and seven of the first workout video in the challenge. And then later on, you have the five moves from the second video round one and two on day seven. Because again, I forgot to film myself on day four when I added the second video. It's really not a big deal, but I felt the need to, you know, explain that last time and this time, so here we are. <laughs> um, you're also going to see some surprise appearances as you watch day seven unfold in pieces. My mum kind of walked into the room at some point and I don't think she realized I was filming myself. So we have two little moments where she laughs maniacally and goes to tickle me from behind. The first one is actually coming up quite quickly and the second one is a little bit later on so when we get to them I'll cut the sound back in and let you experience those moments in all their glory. Love you mama! So that's why you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades. Ah, almost fell. Not too excited. One more! Hmm, <sighs> yes, there you go. <laughs> so, why did I start with arms and abs? Like, of all the things, um, because there was actually an, an order, sorry, to the release of these seven day challenges. Um, Cassie, who runs Blogilates, posted all four as like the monthly workout calendar that she does for her followers every month. Um, this one was for May, so I don't actually remember which challenges came first. I think it was the abs and then thighs and then arms and then glutes. Um, but yes. I wanted to do arms and abs most. Why? Well, because my abs are actually my favorite part of my body to work. Yeah, and, and I know that's that's such a fit girl thing to say, <laughs> having a favorite part of your body to work out, but it's true. Not only have I come to love working out in the last three years, I have found what fitness things I like best, and one of those is working my abs. I feel strong, kind of invincible, and it's gotten to the point where I don't wake up the day after with a world of pain because my muscles are so shocked by what I've put them through. <laughs> 
Um, when it comes to arms though, yeah, no, they are certainly not my favorite part of my body to work. Definitely not. Especially if there are push-ups involved. <laughs> As you can see happening here. Funny story, when I was 11, I shattered my shoulder. And I'm not even joking, I shattered it. Didn't just break it. No, no, I shattered it. And yeah, long story short, I was playing tightrope on a garden wall at my school, which is actually a big no-no, so yes, I, your girl was a rebel. <laughs> I'm joking, that's really not true. Well, kindergarten to about grade two, I was not the most well-behaved child, but I, yeah, I, anyway, yes, <laughs> I was in a place I shouldn't have been, pretending my balance was way better than it actually was, the wall was uneven, I lost my footing, and fell about a metre and a half onto concrete. My arm goes numb, I go pale, fast forward, and my shoulder is literally being held together with metal pins. Not a great time. Um, yes. And, you know, it would have been fine. It would have healed just fine if I did the physiotherapy like I was meant to. But as we established last week, I have always been terrible at committing to a routine. So my right shoulder has always been much weaker than my left. So when it comes to push-ups, I hate life. On the plus side though, I am also very determined. Yeah, I know, full of contradictions. Can't commit to a routine, but is very determined to do so. So, that weakness in my arm is pretty much what pushes me to work on my arms more. Hence, I favoured the arm challenge over the thigh and glute challenge, which are the other challenges in the... I told you I was going to say challenge a lot. I don't know why you're surprised. Um, so during this week-long workout routine, I was fully prepared for my shoulder to hate me. I was anticipating pain like I haven't felt since I broke the dang thing. However, it was actually a pleasant surprise. On the second day, I actually felt more pain in my abs and legs than I did in my arms, which is probably a sign that I didn't do it properly. Still, I was grateful for the lack of agony. That was nice. Um, on a more serious note, I wanted to chat a bit about my fitness journey and how this has kind of been impacted by the worldview of fitness and health, you know, body image and all that jazz. Um, you may have heard me mention in the previous video, I have never had a problem with how my body looks. I count myself very lucky to have had parents who have always been really careful with what they expose my siblings and I to, especially when it comes to body image, weight loss, and diet. Like, I mean, they didn't hide anything from us. They were always really honest about what was out there and what we might come up against. Um, raising four daughters and a son in a world that has always had a very backwards and twisted view of the human body. It, like, I think it's amazing that they were so good at making sure the five of us knew we were loved and accepted no matter what we looked like or how much we weigh or what clothes we wore, like all of it. They were so careful and intentional about the way they raised us. My mum is a healthcare educator and she was a nurse when I was growing up so she knew what we needed to do to be healthy, what foods we needed to have regularly to be the strongest we could, and what foods to avoid, you know? So we were that weird family that had home-cooked meals 95% of the time, and fast food was a treat. 30 cent cones from Macca's driving home from schools in the summer, those were good days. <laughs> um, if we had questions about anything, she would answer truthfully and factually um, from a scientific place. If one of us came home after someone said we were fat, she would say, I will tell you if you are looking over weight. You don't need to listen to what anyone else says about you except me. We eat healthy, we walk to school every other day, you do not need to worry. <laughs> so that's that was great. I'm so grateful for that. The only set of scales we had in the house growing up were actually in my parents' bathroom and that was out of bounds to us. So uh, when I say I don't focus on my weight, I, I really mean that. I weighed myself out of curiosity like three weeks ago for the first time in like five years and honestly, I don't even remember what the number was. I have no idea because I really don't care. I've been raised not to care about my weight. Obviously, you know, if, if I am getting out of control with it, I will notice that something's wrong and I will care then. But my focus has always been on how I feel, how my clothes fit and how much energy I wake up in the morning. You know, things like that. Feelings and senses more than 
how I look in the mirror. I mean, sure, I look at myself in the mirror just as much as anybody else, but I've never thought, dang, I look fat and ugly, because that would be a straight up lie. I, I do notice that some parts of me are tighter and slimmer, leaner or more muscular than others, and like, I do have fat and it creates fat rolls when I sit down. I have mild cellulite and I have minor stretch marks on my hips. That was actually a weird realisation to make for me. For some reason, I had a bit of a dumb moment and thought you actually only get stretch marks when you're pregnant. I know, I know, it's weird, it's silly. Um, but yeah. Funny thing though, I saw someone on Tumblr make a comment that they look like lightning tattoos and honestly, I think that's the coolest thing I've ever heard when it comes to like the way you look at your body, changing things up like that and making it seem like a really cool thing. I think that's really, I think that's a great thing. Really positive, really cool. So in saying all of that, I just want to be clear, I am not being judgmental of people who do value measuring their weight and going on a diet. If you're doing it for a legitimate health reason with a healthy goal in mind and you go about it in the right way, and you, like you research and pay attention to how it's making you feel and how it's affecting you, good on you. But it can't, in my opinion, it can't just be about how you look. That kind of vanity can only be hurtful. That's been my experience anyway. And like, you don't even have to listen to me. When I say things like that, when I make comments like, this is bad for you, like, I'm not an expert, so I completely understand if you won't take my word for it. Like, I'm not a fitness trainer, I am not my mother, the healthcare professional. Like, I am, I've never experienced that deep loathing that so many people experience when they look in the mirror. So I understand if nothing I say holds any merit for you. Like, I've been pretty much some version of skinny my entire life. So if you don't think I'm worth listening to when I say things that sound like advice, Feel free to listen to someone else that knows better than me, and I can give you names, by the way. Um, one such name is Cassie Ho. The biggest reason I love her work so much is because her focus is exactly the same as mine. How you feel, not how you look. I think it's such a, a good thing. <laughs> Getting stronger and smarter and healthier in the way that you work out, sleep, eat, dress, all of it. Listening to your body and figuring out what works best for you because that is how the human body really works. There is no such thing as one size fits all when it comes to health and fitness. That's something I'm learning is, honestly, the entire concept of one size fits all is a complete joke. Your body, I love this, I love this. I don't even know where I got it from, but your body is like a snowflake. No two are exactly the same and they never will be, but I'll be damned if one isn't just as stunningly beautiful as the next. I can't remember where I heard that, but I love it. <laughs> I have never felt so passionately about something like that should seem so simple, but isn't, you know? Like I've learned so much in the last three years about how the world really hasn't changed since the beginning of time when it comes to body image and I want to be someone who knows better and does better for myself and other people because mainstream media sure as hell isn't gonna change on this. And Cassie as a YouTuber and social media influencer is so inspiring to me because she has been fighting that whole Thing her entire career like she has released video after video talking about how much hate she has had to deal with as someone who is focused on fitness it's ridiculous and she absolutely could have conformed and compromised her health and well-being trying to keep up with the demands that come with doing everything right in the eyes of the media but she didn't <laughs> and I love that <sighs> Unfortunately though, the societal repercussions of the mainstream view of the human body still trickle down to people like me who are not in the public eye, <laughs> like at all, and probably never will be, um, and I think it's really sad. Again, I count myself lucky to have grown up in such a supportive and loving environment. Having friends as well who valued me as a person over how I looked. But I would be lying if I said that since focusing more on my fitness and health in the last three years, I haven't experienced really mild 
a really mild version of the negative ripple effect of getting thinner and losing weight. Like, just because I'm not gonna, just because I don't focus on my weight, it doesn't mean I'm going to ignore the fact that I have lost weight. I'm not gonna pretend like I haven't gotten thinner, you know. I've actually moved from being an Australian size 12 to 14, occasionally a 16 depending on the brand, to a size 10 to 12. I, I have had to get rid of so many hand-me-downs from my closet that I could get away with wearing before because I was big enough for them to almost sit right on me, but now I look like a child playing dress-ups. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of awkward because my older sister and I used to be able to share clothes if the need arose, but then it got very difficult to do that and it changed to my little sister and I sharing clothes and now whenever either of them are giving away clothes that are too small they give them to me and I can't imagine it's a very pleasant experience going through that process especially as a younger sister looking at your older sister like don't get me wrong, I am shorter than my younger sister and she lords that over me every chance she gets and it's a great joke between us. But when it's about clothing, I can't help but notice that she makes a lot of comments about how she looks and how her clothes fit and I know I am not the sole reason for that. Like she is still in high school, she's finishing high school this year so you know there is a whole bunch of stuff that comes along with high school that I don't even factor into. But I also don't think it's very outlandish to assume that I am in some way a contributing factor and that's not a nice feeling for me to have knowing that I may be causing her discomfort when it comes to clothes. <laughs> and like beyond that, I also have this feeling of discomfort whenever my size is brought up in conversation. And it's weird because it's literally only my family who talk to me directly about how I look. I mean, obviously, I don't see many people besides my family these days, but I'm talking about before lockdown as well. Unless I have brought it up directly, getting really excited and wanting to talk about my fitness journey with someone, nobody says anything about it. And look, I'm not fussed that people do or do not comment on the fact that I'm getting smaller and thinner than I was three years ago. Well, I, I am, and I really don't mind one way or another if people say something about it. Like. I just thought it's like kind of sad that people fe might feel like that they can't because they think I'll get offended, you know? Like I suppose that's how messed up the world is. People have become so defensive about weight that mentioning anyone's weight in conversation is the worst crime you could commit. Like it's so taboo. Like it's <sighs> like I mm, yeah. <laughs> Like, I'd hope that people knew me well enough to know that I would never fly off the handle and get mad at them for saying, hey, you look like you've lost weight, but, you know, you can't expect everyone to, you can't make the expectations of people like that, and it's, I just think it's sad <laughs> that not only can you, like, you can get judged for losing weight and also judged for not losing weight and gaining weight, but when you are, when you want to talk about weight, you can't. <laughs> Um, that being said though, when I do bring up things like the way my clothes fit, there has occasionally been the odd comment and it should be a positive thing, right? It should feel good to hear that sort of thing because when I work hard, I, I have worked hard to get to where I am and the fact that I've gone down a clothing size should be such a good thing. But it doesn't f feel good when I'm talking about it to someone. Because it brings me right back to that feeling of discomfort. It's really difficult not to wonder whether the feelings behind those kinds of comments are genuinely positive and supporting or a little bit resentful. <laughs> and I don't mean to discredit anyone when I say these things. Again, I am happy to be wrong about this. I am a major overthinker. Like, seriously, I read way too much into situations that mean absolutely nothing. Um, but at the same time, the timing and context of such comments speaks a lot about them. And when those comments are a reply to me talking about how frustrating it is, for example, having no pants to, that stay up on my hips, <laughs> it's, it feels very much like 
I'm not allowed to have any complaints about my body now that I'm thinner and smaller. Like all my problems are solved, you know? I couldn't possibly have anything to complain about because surely once you're skinny, you're happy, right? Like, and I, and I get it. Nobody likes that person who goes around fishing for compliments by complaining. Like, being too small for their clothes is such a bad thing. You want to put them in their place and stop their ego growing any bigger, preventative measures and all that. But it's also not helpful when a person is has a genuine concern about their clothes not fitting because they don't have the money to go out and buy an entirely new wardrobe every time they change clothing sizes, you know? <laughs> like, um, when I'm saying it's really frustrating having a bunch of clothes that are too big for me now, I'm not fishing for compliments, and I know it's really hard to determine whether I am or am not. But also, at the same time, getting a reply like, it's a good problem to have, really isn't helpful, because, like, uh, great, that's not what I was asking for. Um, doesn't really solve the problem. And like, honestly, half the time I don't even know what I'm asking for when I complain about things like that. It, it's not like I need validation, but like, understanding might be nice. Like, oh yeah, I hate it when clothes don't fit properly, that sucks. Like, it's just difficult trying to connect with someone over something that has been at the front of my life for a while, opening up about the negative stuff that could come along with getting smaller and thinner because... You know, when they say things like, it's a good problem to have, it feels a bit like they're throwing it back in my face. And I wasn't expecting that kind of throw, like, backlash. Like, it's kind of sad that I should have, though. For all the world's progress with body image, it feels like a major step back to be met with negativity when you should be, you know, praised for working hard to make a positive change for your body. I kind of want to apologize for dwelling so long on this because the workout segment's almost over. We're in the second last move and for all of my talk about focusing on how you feel instead of how you look, there was a lot of talk about how I look. And I know how that must sound to you, um, but I really hope you understand. What I'm trying to express is that as I've grown and learned in my fitness journey, it's made me so acutely aware of the fact that how people look is still such a huge thing that even when someone does something good to improve their body and in turn improve themselves, other people's other people are still focused on how they look and the comments are hardly ever. You seem a lot more motivated and confident. You work so much harder. You you know you're able to do so much more. You know it's. And I'm not even talking about myself anymore. I've, I have seen almost nobody except my family since April, so I wouldn't expect people to see that change in me because they haven't seen me. This is a broader generalization about the world and people. Looks are still important, apparently, and it makes me sad. It's not that you shouldn't pay any attention to your looks because it's nice to look nice. It's nice to, you know, it's nice to make an effort, but it's not all there is to it. <laughs> but again, I count myself very lucky to have had the upbringing and life experiences that I have. Most people don't have the same support systems I had and honestly I think those people are much stronger than I am for possibly having gone through much worse backlash than I have. My small feelings of discomfort don't even corner the market on the negative side of health and fitness. So I really hope you got something out of this, you know, something to think about. <laughs> um, we're almost at the end of the workout video. I think there was a clip I wanted to show with the sound in because, I don't know, I said something funny or whatever. Yeah, I probably could have talked about the actual moves themselves and the workout more. I will most likely do that next video. It's a learning process. These whole, This whole situation, this recording situation is different for me. So. With that being said, I will cross over after this next clip to the reveal, and I hope you enjoy. Comments down below how your arms are feeling right now. I'm feeling like pumped up. You know what I'm saying? It feels so good. It feels okay. I'm gonna go now. Have a shower, cause. Woo! Day seven. Yay! The reveal! 
uh, I'm a little excited about this. Blah blah blah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm a little excited about this one. Thank you, Carl, for contributing in the background. Uh, honestly, I'm more in the dark about this one than I was with the first before and after because, like, I tried to make it a whole reaction thing where I do, like, I, I look at the photos for the first time on camera with every video, but honestly, that just didn't work with the first video because it, you know, um, it was a while ago. Um, but with this one, I managed to keep myself a little bit more in the dark. Uh, obviously, I had to put the photos together in, like, the official before and after collage thing, but um, I was able to keep the details for myself because, <laughs> spoiler alert, it's not a huge difference, again. Um, but yes, let's look at the details together, shall we? So, three, two, one. Let me just get it up on my computer so that I can see it for myself. <laughs> okay, so, honestly, my arms just got a little bit bigger. Which is nice, I suppose. It means I've built up muscle. It's a bit weird going from like picture one and three between those two and then two and four. It's like my brain has to skip over the second picture and it loses all concept of which picture I'm looking at. Anyway, <laughs> honestly, I think the biggest difference I see is actually in the videos of me doing the workout. I remember as I was editing together all of the, the little snippets um, of day one and seven, as I was doing, I can't even remember what, one of either the shoulder taps or the mountain climbers, one of the two. Oh no, the up, up, down, down, it's that one. Um, and it was like, I just thought, wow, okay, my shoulders look really muscular for some reason. Uh, so that's nice. Um, I saw them working better and therefore looking stronger in the videos than I did in the photo. Didn't really notice that in the first round of videos for the app challenge though. <sighs> Anyway, that's, that's the before and after. Again, yeah, like I said, it's not an overwhelming result, it's not a huge difference. Um, again, you, I suppose you need to be doing this sort of strengthening for a while leading up to this challenge and doing all the right things, sleeping, eating, drinking water um, to the best of your ability as preparation for this sort of thing so you get even more intense results um but yeah that's that's my honest honest take on what the blogger Lattie's arm challenge did for me uh it taught me some stuff and like that weakness i talked about in my arms i noticed that more as this challenge went on which i wasn't expecting i was expecting it to get less but for some reason i noticed it a lot more especially in those single arm pushes um, when I was doing my right versus when I was doing my left it was really it was weird to feel that it was it felt so much harder when I was on when I was pushing with my right um, because that's that's the shoulder I broke so that was interesting mm. anyway that is the arm challenge I hope you enjoyed it um, I'm gonna be doing the thigh challenge next week which you know my brain still doesn't know what to do with uh, but we'll get there and I hope you have a lovely morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next week. Okay, bye.